I've really enjoyed this project and hopefully it inspires you to do something a little bit creative as well. Hi there everyone, I'm Jennifer Kirk welcoming you back here up into the loft on Weir Yard. And today I've been challenged by Hornby and Bassett Loke to do another steampunk build. And what they've sent over is a few bits and pieces from the steampunk range and a locomotive from their Electrotren uh, label. And my challenge is to turn this into an all new steampunk themed locomotive. And actually, I love the creativity that this invokes. It's the freedom to kind of do whatever you want without having to get bogged down in details. And I, I love that kind of building. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories. And we're going to be seeing what I can cook up with what Hornby have sent over. <laughs> For the steampunk build, Hornby have sent over a number of different items. First up is from their Electrotren range, and uh, those of you who are into kit bashing uh, using 3D printed bodies, uh, these are a great source for the chassis. But they brought these out as well in some suitable private owner liveries for the UK market. And they're a very, very inexpensive way of building up your locomotive fleet. Now they sent one of these over for the steampunk conversion build. So we've got Molly here. I'm just gonna get rid of the box, give ourselves a bit of space. And I'm just looking in there, we've got some couplings. We can discard those. Let's get this all out of the box and see what we've got to work with. So it really is a good basis for this build. It's a, a one piece body with a few little embellishments and it's a reasonable amount of detail. I'm already liking the rivet detail and this cab is quite interesting as well. So I'm going to have to decide exactly what I'm going to do. Although what I'm thinking is uh, I've got a Dremel and uh, I'm thinking that first up I want to expose some of the detail that you can see just down in there. It's uh, just try and get it to catch the light. You can see some back head detail going on. So I'm thinking with the Dremel, I can cut across here, uh, cut across the back there as well, and make this a nice open cab with a, a tall spectacle plate at the front, very reminiscent of some of the Victorian type locomotives. I'm also thinking on the front, um, some kind of snow plow, um, a kind of a metal multifaceted triangular shaped snow plow. I can make that out of plastic card perhaps and just see where we get to adding on some extra pipe detail. I'm going to have a really good rummage through my scrap box to be honest with you and see what I can find. They've also sent over quite helpfully from the Bassett Loke steampunk range. Uh, we've got um, just see a uh, steampunk watch gear pack so you can see there BL 8007 and we've got BL8008 steampunk clock cogs pack and uh, these are actually metal they're really nice pieces and um, I'm actually looking at some of the gearing there the tooth gearing on that is really really good um, it's, it's almost as if actually they've gone out to company that makes watches and go can we have some of those gears um, these sprockets as well these look quite good for almost like a chain drive that kind of thing so we've got two packets of those and just to get into the mood for coloring we've got some of the steampunk acrylic paints as well from the Bassett Loke range and these are picked from the Humbrol acrylics that you know and love but they've gone for a particular colors that fit in really well with the steampunk vibe so really looking forward to using those uh, at the end just to decorate up this model now I'm going to have a rummage through my scrap box and see what bits and pieces I've got and sometimes when you're doing a build like this it's nice to be inspired by bits and pieces we're letting our imaginations run riot so I'm just going to have a look through and all of the leftover bits from kits just move that up there out of the way so you can see here 
we've got a few bits and pieces and these are left over from an airfix kit that i adapted and this is actually the underside of the hull of uh, it's one of the thornycroft torpedo boats and um, i'm going to use this as being some of the plastic card that i can cut up and we've got here some of the detail this is where the prop shafts for the boat would have gone and uh, i can use this perhaps cut this up using the dremel to make the components for a kind of a plow on the front i just got into my head um the idea of a very steampunky um plow made from a uh, solid metal triangular style plates um but of course these builds do evolve as we go we've got some more leftover pieces from kits uh, there's a few people there as well um they're probably a little bit too military um could maybe use some of them the sprue actually is really great for making pipe work uh we've got some more bits and pieces on there there's a, a good few spare pieces left over from when that kit was built uh another piece of sprue and then i've got some other bits like the um that's part of the superstructure from uh, an airfix arc royal kit hms arc royal i think that came from uh, may or may not use it i've got some random pieces of plastic card as well scrap off cuts always great to cut bits out of actually there's some more interesting figures here they've been given a coat of yellow paint for something else and these i think are from the raf crash kit uh, which uh, is 176 scale and these are guys in flame proof suits and they actually look like they wouldn't look out of place in a, a Frankenstein themed thing so let's put them to one side as well and then there's a whole host of other bits and pieces that I can probably cut some uh, extra parts from as well uh, I think there's some more superstructure there from I think that's uh, either Prince Eugen or it could be King George V. I'm not even sure which ship that came from. But again, you can see there's there's lots of shapes, interesting shapes that we can make up with uh, on here. The idea is to look at items for their shape, not what they are. So I'm going to go and get my Dremel and I'm going to start work, I think, first up on uh, cutting down the cab at the back. I think that's a great starting point because we're gonna lose all this anyway. And hopefully that's gonna give us a nice point at which we can start thinking about the structure of the steampunk build. So I found my Dremel and this is what I'm gonna use with a cutting disc. And of course, being very, very careful. The first cut, they say, is uh, sometimes the most dangerous. It's uh, certainly the one where you could uh, really really make a mess and i'm just going to get to work i'm going to film this as a time lapse uh, because it's going to be quite overpowering on sound and we'll just see where we get to I've reached a point where I've used super glue to put all of these uh, gears on the side just trying to build up a credible gear chain and uh, got some going on there behind uh, I've put in some pipes made those from sprue 
and uh, on the other side again we built up a gear chain just using those uh, Bassett Loke uh, steampunk gear sets on the front I've used some of the superstructure from one of those airfix warship kits along with parts from that Thornycroft motor torpedo boat that uh, were left unused on the sprue just trying to cut interesting shapes now I tried to make that uh, kind of snow plow I wasn't happy with the direction it was going in and this is one of the things that you're just free to experiment don't feel that you have to persevere with something that's not working out if it isn't working out try something different and that really is where the imagination comes in I also fitted a brake standard there at the back I had uh, a number of these left over from when I've DCC fitted the uh, Hornby X L and Y pugs. Uh, essentially, when you DCC fit them, you need the space in the cab. So, unfortunately, the brake standard tends to get pulled out and uh, dumped in the spares box. So, it's an ideal opportunity to kind of put one of those back. We've got all of that back head detail in there. I'm really pleased with how opening this cab up has worked, made it look far more Victorian. I'm going to start the paint on this. I'm going to give it an overall coat in purple. I, I just like the idea of a purple locomotive and uh, that will give us the base coat over which we can do some dry brushing and just start to try and bring out some of this detail. I'm going for matte 42. I think matte always works much better in model form. So I'm going to go into the time lapse again. And I'm going to get a base coat onto this model, which then means we can pick out some of the highlights and lowlights with those acrylics. we are first coat of paint I'm just going to leave that to set I don't want to try and go over the top before it's fully dry it is a matte paint so at the moment it looks glossy because it's not dry I'm going to leave that until it goes completely matte and then we come back for the detailing stage the pinky purple is starting to really dry nicely and as you can see it's starting to go matte as it dries which is perfect exactly what we want Whilst that's drying up, what I want to do now is take a look at the steampunk acrylic paints uh, that uh, come from the Bassett Loke range. And it's actually a really nice set because what you get in the box, if I just move, let's get some space here going on. Uh, so I'm just going to move the camera down a little bit and there we can see what we've got is an assortment of different acrylic colours. These are water based so um, a lot easier to clean up, a lot less fumes if you're going to be using these indoors and these have been hand-picked by Hornby's uh, steampunk expert Laurie Calvert who designed the steampunk range and we've got uh, an assortment of colours that he picked out that he felt were really great representations representatives for uh, anything steampunk. So here we have Matt 186, number 87, Matt 61, 83, Matt 65, and this is rail colour, just let it focus in on that, number 418, which uh, appears to be really great for things like rust and anything that's a bit sort of tired industrial that's got a bit of a patina to it and i think patina is one of those great words that's uh, perfect for a lot of things steampunk now we're also going to get in here we've got three brushes as well so we've got some um, different sizes all really nice heads on there so we've got some quite small ones for detail and uh, then that one there as well, we've got, uh, just pull the top off, we've got uh, quite a nice thick brush. And these are great brushes from the Humbrol range, so they are perfect for the task in hand. I'm also going to add to these some other colours, because first of all we've gone a bit off-piste with that uh, sort of pinky mauve colour. I'm going to add in here uh, Satin number 85, this is from the Humbrol enamel range. Uh, Metallic number 56, that's like a silvery gunmetal, perfect for what I want. 
Um, probably going to need a little bit of satin 132, which is like a signal red. Um, just in case I need it, I've got matte 24, which is a, a matte yellow. And then I've got a bronze colour here, metallic 171. And I think I also would like to use some possibly of the matte 28, which is like a very matte, slightly greyish white. And I'm going to put them all to one side. And what I'm going to do is just build up layers. It's, it's a bit finicky. I'm not going to film this because uh, it's easier to just kind of tackle it a bit at a time. And I'm going to just bring out some of the detail on this model and we'll see where we get to. And the final product is here. You can see that that uh, matte pinky purple does work really, really well. We used an assortment of different colours, including that silvery gunmetal and bronze as well to pick out some of the fine detail. And uh, one of the other areas too that I'm quite pleased with is using some of those figures from the Airfix motor torpedo boat painted up in some more unusual colours. I've given them gunmetal silver uh, trousers and boots. Uh, bright signal red jackets and caps and uh, I've put a trio of them in there making good use of the gentleman with the binoculars. I thought that that looked nicely steampunk. As you can see looking around to the front there's some more of uh, the detail picked out. The smokestack I felt was best to do in black as was the cab roof and that just set things off. Looking on the other side as well more of the detail picked out. Those gears actually were a pleasure to work with. You can see we made up the gear chain, just trying to put them in a way that kind of felt like they had a purpose, that they were meshing together and not just random bits and pieces swirling away for no reason other than aesthetics. And I think we've possibly captured a little bit of the look I was going for. Those pipes made from sprue as well, they just try and break up the shape of this locomotive and the part of the airfix kit superstructure on the front just adds a little bit of something different which uh, was what I was really going for. The removal of the cab on this locomotive has actually really improved its look and this is something that I think um, using this locomotive as a donor for other perhaps more conventional projects, removing the cab really does anglicise the locomotive and make it look really quite Victorian. You can see again we've got that full crew in there, the three men, and uh, although the uh, it's a bit dark behind there, I've painted up the back head in black and picked out some of the detail on there as well in red and the uh, bronze colour too. Now steampunk doesn't normally go with a bit of red but I left the connecting rods done in red because I thought that that would match in with these gentlemen's red coats and what I was thinking of here was the bright red of British Army uniforms back before somebody thought it was probably a good idea if you couldn't just uh, pick you out against the uh, scenery. So uh, I think it actually does work quite well. For a fun and quick conversion, actually this has come out remarkably well. I had a great deal of fun putting this together and actually aside from the gear set and the base locomotive, which in the Electro Trend range is remarkably good value anyway, everything else were paints that uh, I had lying around and bits of old airfix kits too, even that sprue comes in useful and it's a good tip, never throw away the sprue because you can make all sorts of pipe work from it and treat it as free modelling materials. So there you have it, another steampunk build and I really do like this pinky purple colour from the Humbrol enamel range, it's just that little bit different, certainly incredibly eye-catching. I've really enjoyed this project and hopefully it inspires you to do something a little bit creative as well. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed building that really off-the-wall locomotive. Don't forget to tickle the like button and also share this video too. It's really, really helpful to the channel 
to uh, share this out there to Facebook and uh, everywhere else. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And uh, ring that bell. You'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, and NYMR-ish. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.